What's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Simon Servita and today I'm going to teach you guys how to create realistic melodies without a MIDI controller. I know that some of you guys can't afford a MIDI controller and there is that occasion where you have to work outside on a laptop or something. So it's important to know how to create realistic melodies with only a mouse and keyboard. Okay, so we're going to just do uh, what I just said. Okay, so I have a piano loaded up in Keyscape and we're going to make a really quick melody. Bum, 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 bada. Do it four times like that. Then just have some chords at the bottom. Okay, and then we repeat it twice, and then we go down uh, here. And then we go down here, and then it goes back up to here. Okay, let's hear that. It's a good melody, but it can obviously be a lot better if it was more realistic. So the first thing we're gonna do is adjust the velocity. And if you don't know what that is, velocity is how hard you hit the note. And so if it's up here, you're hitting it really hard. And if you're down here, you're hitting it really soft. And the differences between the two is a lot more than just being louder or quieter. Like at the top of the velocity, you get a lot more brightness and you get a stronger attack. And at the bottom end, the attack's a lot softer and it's a lot less bright. So we have to take that into consideration for this melody. There's no wrong answer, but personally for this melody, I want the attack to be a lot softer. Sounds a lot better already. But the reason it still sounds robotic is because all these velocities are still the same. No one plays this consistently. So an easy way to fix this is to randomize all the velocities. So I can highlight everything, and if I press Alt-R, you get this randomizer here, and there's a little velocity knob here, and once I start to move it, the velocities spread out a bit more. So you don't want them too far apart, but there is one more thing we should do. If I was playing this on the piano, I'd play these chords with my left hand and I would play this melody on my right hand. So we're gonna randomize these in sections because playing in the same hand is a lot more consistent. So first I want the chords to be a bit lower so the melody can stand out more. And then we're gonna randomize it and we're not gonna spread it too much. Then for the melody, I wanna bring it down a bit and we're gonna randomize it as well. And that looks good. Let's hear this. I think I wanna move the chords a bit down. Much, much better. So the velocities are done now, so the next thing we have to work on is the timing. And if we zoom in closer, we can see that every MIDI note is perfectly on the grid. The first thing I wanna fix are these top notes. They're a bit too short, and I want them to be sustained a lot longer. So I'm just gonna do this and make it a bit longer. Kind of just have them sustain the entire note length. So for chords specifically, there are a couple techniques that people like to do. One of them is the strum tool. So if you select them and press Alt S, you'll get this window. Uh, when we start moving up this time knob, you can see they start to get offset and they're kind of just rolling into each other now. Now the strum tool is good, but if you look closely, you can see that all these strums are exactly the same. So there's not enough variation. So one thing we can do to fix that is maybe just like highlight them in sections like this and then strum them individually. Or you can do another method, which is using this cut tool. So if we left click with the cut tool, it will cut the note. But if we right click with the cut tool, it will cut and delete the note. And that's where we're going to be using the right click. So all I'm going to do is hold alt while I'm doing this. And now we can make our own custom strums. This takes a bit longer, but there's definitely more variation now. Let's do a long one here. You can do like a little triangle kind of thing here. This guy's not that good of a player. So he's kind of just going all over the place. Shoddy performance. Okay, let's hear that now. I think for this one, we're gonna actually use the strum tool because there's a lot more going on. Let's do this. Okay, I think that's good. So let's hear everything together. Last thing that you should do is understand your instrument. And it takes a bit of research, but you have to understand the limitations of the instrument that you're recreating. So for example, if we are imitating a piano, the human body only has 10 fingers. So there should not be more than 10 notes on the piano. Also, the average person can only spread their hand across an octave. So when you're putting down chords, make sure you keep that in mind. Okay, let's do one more melody with the guitar. Let's 
just fix up the timing of these notes first so everything's consistent. Then we can change it uh, once it sounds bad. So the first thing we wanna do is make this melody stand out more. So let's just bring up the velocity for that. And let's bring down the velocity for the chords. Just pretty much earing it until I find something I like. Let's randomize these chords. Highlight. There you go. For the melody, I'm gonna just customize the velocities by myself. So I'm just kind of following my ear right now. Just kind of want accents on a stronger beat like that. Here we go. Actually, I think I want, I think I want a bit of a stop. So let's use the strum tool this time. I'm gonna do these two. Now let's do these two. Let's strum these last two, we'll use it like this, and then we'll kind of do one like this. That might be a bit too much. Yeah, it's too much. One sec. I'm not an expert on the guitar, but there are some things that you should know. For example, there are six strings on your average guitar. There are certain notes that you can't play at the same time. For example, I can't play this B, and I can't play this D at the same time because they are on the same string. So it's it's impossible. That's why you see a lot of guitarists doing hammer-ons. Honestly, I don't know much about the guitar, but that's why you have to do your research so you can make something really authentic. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If there's another tutorial you wanna see, make sure you comment it below, and I'll see you guys soon. If you have any suggestions, leave a comment. If you like this video, leave a like. If you really like this video, subscribe. If you didn't like this video, leave. Just leave. Get out of here.